This is me running my own conferencing system in a call with a thousand users. I built this system with my friend Griffin out of necessity. We wanted a conferencing system that could be fully customized, written in Rust, and more importantly, backed by a global community of brilliant open source developers. Griffin and I got a proof of concept to work. Here's a video about it if you want to check it out. The community really enjoyed it. In this video, we want to build on this concept, polish the extremely rough edges of the system, and get it to support at least a thousand peers connected to the same call. There are many communication platforms out there, such as Zoom, Google Meets, Flipping Blue Jeans by Verizon. Is that even a real app? When did they buy it? It's impossible for Verizon to build anything, not even the towers. Okay, let me check. Ah, uh, there you go. They bought it back in 2020. But even when they all use open source tools behind the scenes, such as WebRTC, WebSockets, RTP sockets, they all share something in common. Their code is completely closed. And this is why I always wanted to build my own conferencing system. First, let's take a look at how the system performed prior to all the optimizations that we will demonstrate on this video. So the first problem we had is to simulate a bunch of users connecting to the system. To accomplish this, we created a bot. I did not create the bot from scratch. Instead, I used CodeMuse to create a project for me. You can see that I used plain English to describe the program that I wanted CodeMuse to create. Notice how I tell CodeMuse, which parameters I want to configure via environment variables. For example, using the end clients variable, I define how many bots I want to spin. Also, I specify the format of the URL that I expect the bots to connect to. I'll make sure to leave the prompt in the description so that you can play with it. And after tweaking what I got back from the tool, I was ready to test. So I ran the program and I was able to see how all the web sockets were connecting to the server. But there was a big problem. I realized that I needed to mock data to actually load the system. So I decided to add a very simple rule the system will echo the audio and video packets that are sent by the user that I defined in an environment variable. Of course, that user is going to be me. <laughs> when I join the call, all the bots are going to echo the messages coming from my user, both for video and audio. And with that, we can properly simulate users. Let's see how many peers the system can support on a single call. We'll start with five. So yeah, the system seems to hold up. Now we'll bump it to 10. Yep. Looks good to be. And finally, when we bump it to 15, we see that the video starts to fall behind. This means that our system has a bunch of bottlenecks, unfortunately. It will be easy to just jump to conclusions and start guessing, which is sadly something common in the software industry. Is it the backend? Is it the front end? Should we just buy a bigger server to run the backend? Is our render code too inefficient? So we just took a step back and came up with a methodical way to root cause the issues. The first principle I want to share with you is to start simple. So it seems to me like we are just like sending a lot of information back and forth between the bots, the browser and the server. Why don't we take a look at the traffic and see if we can pinpoint what's causing the bottleneck here. Check this out. After looking at the network traffic within the WebSocket, I was able to find two kinds of packets. One of them is like a few bytes, like between 200 and 400 bytes, while the other is around two kilobytes. So this is extremely suspicious. And after looking into it, I realized that the audio packets are 10 times the size of the video packets. You might ask yourself why, and that's because we were not encoding the audio packets. We were sending raw audio. I decided to test this theory by removing the audio packets. And sure enough, you can see how my camera stays in sync with the peers. So we pretty much duplicated the process that we use for the video encoder using the audio encoder Chrome APIs. And it worked great. We were able to reduce the size of the messages and now the audio and video are synchronized. One aspect that really annoys me about this UI is that we are not taking advantage of the full screen. We just pile all the peers into one row. So let's add some CSS to fix this. Back in the day, to create a CSS grid, you will use a CSS library like Bootstrap, or maybe even use tables or something disgusting like that. But it turns out that there's a better way. So let's go ahead and make these changes. So let's use a display column grid and let's define how we're going to like lay out the columns. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of CSS, but here are the results, so it does the thing. Let's move on. 
Another critical fix is to allow the user to select the microphone and camera that they want to use. Also, we need to verify that they actually give us permission to access their devices, else the application will just crash. We modified the connect button so that after pressing it, the web page will ask for permission to access your mic and camera. If you grant permission, then we'll just connect you to the server, else we'll just show an error. Calling get user media with constraints will trigger the browser to show the prompt to either allow access to the camera and the microphone or to reject it. After getting access to the user devices, we can create a couple of HTML selectors so that we can select between different microphones and cameras. Jesus Christ, look at all those artifacts. So here I added like 200 peers that are just sitting there with the black screens and 10 peers that are actively like echoing my packets. And I'm extremely familiar with this particular issue. Basically, the frames are being streamed out of order. So what we have to do on the UI is like assemble the video stream. This means that we will have to add some reordering logic. All I want you to walk away with is that I created a wrapper for the browser's video decoder. I keep a B3 map where I buffered the inbound packets. If the frames are out of order, I just put them on the buffer. Uh, you'll see that I mimicked all the like the public API that the standard uh, decoder has. But if you look at the decoder, I do pretty fancy logic to determine if I should like go ahead and decode the frame, the inbound frame right away or buffer it. You might be wondering why the hell did I use a B3 map? The reason is that we can get all the values in the map sorted by key. And this is exactly what we need to keep our video frames video sequence in order. It's all open source, so feel free to check it out. We are so close. You can see how the thumbnails are keeping up with my camera. Jesus Christ. So after playing around with Linux, I realized that it's so much better than macOS with regards to running Docker. Seems like macOS uses some sort of weird virtualization, so that's basically crashing our Actix server. So let's pivot to uh, Linux. So here I have my trusty Linux computer from like 10 years ago or something. So let's see how it works. All right, so let's test this thing. So I have my Linux computer running right here. I, I have my Mac here, I'm recording both. And what I'm going to do is go to the website. I'm going to connect to the to the web socket. And I'm going to connect the first 20 peers. These first 20, 20 peers are going to actually stream or echo the packets that I send with my computer. Boom. Okay. So this is looking good. It's a, a tiny bit laggy, I have to say. Probably this computer is running too hot, but well, well, you know what? Let's see what happens. Then let's add 180 peers. So with that, we'll have a total of 200 peers connected. All right, looking good. Now, 400. Sweet. We are still in business. 600. Probably jumped a gun there because you want to give it a second for the system to settle. There you go. Okay. We're in business. Keep in mind that I'm recording with my Mac, so that doesn't help. 800. I'm going to have like, I'm going to need like a streamer set up with two computers. One for programming and the other one for streaming. All right, we are alive. Hey, that's great. And now the last batch. So if we, if it works right now, we'll have a total of a thousand peers connected to the same call. You can do it. I believe in you. Jesus, all right. Yes, yes. <laughs> it works. This is fantastic. I'm so happy. If the community enjoys this video, I'm planning to continue building on it to build like a horizontally scalable system with a few hundred nodes and, you know, making this like a real service. So let me know what you think about it, if you think it's silly, if you think it's useful. I'm so happy, I'm so thrilled with this, but yeah, you know, just let me know in the comments, alright? See you in the next one.